Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the talk with Sorrentan Howery once again. Today we are joined by K. Timothy Zimik, IRS Chief Commissioner of Income Tax Department of Revenue, Government of India, for an exclusive interview. Let's hear what he has in store for us today. And welcome to the show, sir. And thank you for agreeing to do this with us. I'm looking forward to a fruitful and a very interesting interaction with you. All right. And uh, just before we get into the main topics, we would like to know who K. Timothy Zimik is as a person. And then uh, we'd like to know more about your family. Can you kindly share it with us briefly? Okay, Sorintan. Thank you for having me in this show. I was born at Lung Phu village in 1962. Okay. And thereafter, my family shifted to Sinai Gate village in 1964. I did my uh, graduation from San Antonio Shillong uh, in English honors. From Shillong, I went to Delhi. I did my master's and also my MPhil mm -hmm. from, uh, from uh, JNU New Delhi All right. and international studies. Mm -hmm. I also did a management course in Canada right. and also in Washington, mm -hmm. USA. Then, while doing MPhil, I got into this uh, Indian Revenue Service and okay. I joined this service in 1985. Okay. I, my first posting was in Delhi. Mm. I, work, I worked there for eight years. And thereafter, I went to Mumbai. And in Mumbai, I worked for 18 years. Mm. I also worked in Guwahati. Nasik, Nagpur, and my last posting was in Kolkata. Okay. There I retired as Chief Commissioner of Income Tax. Uh, during my service, I tried to help my people. So I helped hundreds of our people to find jobs in mm -hmm. private sector. Mm -hmm. And I also did uh, uh, free coaching for 10 standard students in my area okay. on my own. Voluntarily? Voluntarily. All right. So these are the few things. I also work as a general secretary, mm. Shillong, okay. as a doing, I mean, during my stay okay. there. Okay. Then I was also president, mm. Tangkul student, student Union, Delhi. Okay. okay. Yeah, so like that, uh, my last, uh, uh, in Calcutta, I was president of the uh, these uh, Northeast professionals mm. and officers. Mm -hmm. So I was also president there. Mm -hmm. So likewise, apart from my service, mm -hmm. I also did uh, some social service for my people. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So mm. that is about my myself. Right, okay. now let's hear something about your family as yeah. well. As far as my wife is concerned, mm. she is an artist. Great. She was running an art class in Mumbai. Mm. And she, was, she is uh, very popular there. Mm -hmm. She has taught more than 1,000 students there. Wonderful. In fact, at one point of time, she was earning more money than me. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so she acted accordingly. Right, right. Okay. okay. So she is now with me. Mm. Uh, she is doing all this painting. Mm. She is oh, continuing beautiful. with this yes. artwork. And uh, as, far as, as far as my children are concerned, mm -hmm. my eldest son is Hak Singh Zimik. Okay. He is an electronics engineer uh, from uh, Beach Bilani, Dubai campus. Mm -hmm. And he has been working with one Switzerland company, we call it ADB, okay. uh, for the last 14 years. Mm -hmm. So he still wants to be, uh, he, now he's, he wants to start his own business. All right. My second child is... Uh, a daughter, mm. Kazin Zimik. She is working in, uh, she is a fashion designer. She is working in uh, USA, mm. uh, based in New York. Okay. Now, recently she is married to one American who is a corporate lawyer. Mm. My youngest son is Yang Zimik. Mm. He did his uh, economic honors from St. Stephen's. Mm -hmm but he wants to pursue a career in movie making. All right. 
So he joined Whistling Woods in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And in Mumbai, he worked for around seven years. Now, recently, he has gone to uh, USA, Los Angeles. And he's, he's doing his master's in uh, this movie making. Okay. He has joined this uh, American Film Institute. Okay. That's all about my children, right. myself, my wife. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. And yes, uh, a wonderful and a beautiful, uh, lovely family. Thank yeah. you so much for taking Thank us you. through. And um, especially we youngsters would like to know the experience of being an IRS officer. How has it been for you in brief? You see, this is a very challenging work mm -hmm. because uh, this is something new to us. Right. Collecting revenues for the country. Okay. And these revenues our department collects mm. that is used for the development is of this country. So a lot, a lot of pressure is given to mm -hmm. us so that maximum taxes are collected and these taxes are used by, by the country for the development of the entire country. Right. So this is something you have to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I work in the revenue service, I do not want to confine myself only in that field. So I right. did all, I did a lot of things to help my people. Right. Very, very inspiring. Yes, do, do you feel our more youngsters should become IRS officers in the days to come? Do you, do you think yes, this is needed? Yes, why not? Why not? Okay. Mm. Okay. It's a challenging uh, field. Right. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, mm. Now let's, let's get into the main discussion. And our discussion today will be based solely on your articles, which you have uh, written, so many articles, and then important ones as well, uh, mostly published in the Aja Daily, the Sangha Express, the Infal, Infal Free Press. So um, the first question I'd like to ask you is uh, based on your article, which is titled Economic Development, Special Focus on the Hills of Manipur. It was uh, published on December 4, 24, 2019. So uh, looking at the article, it was written with special focus on quality education, youth employment, and farming. So we'd like to know um, how the tribal people have been deprived of uh, development, economic, economically or socially, and uh, solutions for the same, if you have uh, on your, in your mind. See, in this article, I have talked about education. Right. To start with, we need quality education. Mm -hmm. And without quality education, we don't, we, our students do not have a bright future. So I have written that uh, our people should have good education. Mm. But if we look at today, the problem we face is that the government schools are dying, right. if not already dead. Mm -hmm. There are no schools, there are no proper schools, there are no students, there are no uh, Teachers, only few teachers are there. There are also absentee teachers. And all, most of the teachers are unqualified. Right. So why, why this is so? So the government is not taking care of the education system. Mm -hmm. That is my, my issue okay. with the government of Manipur. Mm -hmm. So there should be enough allocation of funds. Mm. And when it comes to recruitment of teachers, etc., then it should be corruption-free. Right. Qualified teachers should be taken. And they should be stationed where they are posted. And if there, is, there, there are no sufficient teachers, then they should be posted. What I see today is that most of the teachers are now in the plain area. Mm -hmm. And in some schools, there are excess teachers okay. just transferred here and there mm. from the hills because no, 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 no teacher is willing to go to the, these remote areas. Mm. So this is unfortunately taking place in Manipur. Right. And uh, I, in this article, I have also talked regarding ecotourism. Mm -hmm. See, what is so valuable, uh, what is the most important asset we have? I have also talked on this uh, agroforestry. Let right. me put these two together. Okay. okay. See, what is our hills, our mountains, our rivers, our animals, they are our assets. Right. 
Our landscape are so beautiful. I want this our land converted into an area of economic activity and of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now, on this on this uh, issue, I have I have been advocating that we should we should have this. Uh, Mm. horticulture based agroforestry. Mm -hmm. We have this agriculture system where our normal activities are going on. But if we plant very expensive mar marketable fruits like apples, mm -hmm. avocado, then kiwis, mangoes, and the entire area is covered by this one day in three, four in four to five years' time, then we can have all these fruits. Then we can export all these fruits to entire country, if not beyond beyond our country. So to do that, I have been telling the government of Manipur mm. that sufficient funds should be allocated, right. and crafted saplings should be given to farmers. Not only crafted saplings, but also they should be assisted financially. If we assist the farmers in this context, then the important thing that happened in my area is that the zooming cultivation mm -hmm. will be reduced. Right. Erosion taking place in my area also be controlled. And uh, farmers will not be forced to do these poppy plantations. Right. Because many of our poor people, poor farmers have been forced into poppy plantations which is not right. Hmm. So this, this uh, agroforestry agroforest, and then ecotourism. Once we develop our land into such a beautiful place with all the food trees taking place, then automatically this uh, ecotourism will come. Right. It is already very beautiful. Right, right. Uh, uh, talk us through uh, youth employment as well, which you have mentioned in the, this article. See, a lot of our youth, youth, youths, young people, have come back because of a COVID. Right. Now they are looking for jobs. See, one way is this, uh, this uh, ecotourism, okay. agroforestry. But our, in our place, we don't have big, big manufacturing units, and we cannot have it hmm. in a big way. What is what we can have is this service sector service sector. So this is what I am saying as, a, as, a, uh, 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 as I work in the department. I try to take my people to this service sector, mm. hospitality business, right. this, uh, this, um, uh, this uh, we, I have uh, like uh, outside Manipur, I have taken them to uh, Marjan Navy, mm. cruise lines, mm -hmm. all these uh, all these service sectors like uh, uh, this. Uh, Especially the hospitality sector. Yeah, okay. including these uh, call centers. And right. So I have been leading to all these places. In fact, I, I work like a bad finder okay. for my people. Okay, which, which is uh, absolutely needed. And then uh, yeah. we are lucky to have a person like you who is very helpful. Thank you for that. So uh, talking about the quality of education, youth employment, and farming, uh, are you saying, or in your opinion, do you think we tribal people are being deprived of this kind of development because of the inefficiency of the government of Manipur? Or is it uh, because of ourselves? You, our, see, uh -huh. you see, it is, uh, it's not only common of Manipur. Okay. See, our people have to compete. Right. See, when we talk about education, as I said, service sector is the only place we have. Therefore, we need to have a good education. And when I say good education, it includes edu English educated population. All right. And our students must be capable, competitive, and not only competitive, they are employable. Hmm. Even if you get your graduation or even uh, MA, masters and all, if you are not employable, then it is very difficult to help them. Okay. And they themselves will not be able to find the kind of job they think they deserve. So education naturally 
has in my entire area, our emphasis should be given on education. Okay. Only private sector is doing on education. Mm -hmm. So government is doing very badly in this. Right. right. Okay. Let me ask a question which is somehow related to the one which I put up. And uh, of course, based on your article, uh, it, was, it was titled Economic Backwardness of the Heels of Manipur Revenue Sharing. It was published on October 30, 2020, which talk about... Uh, yeah, uh, the, the tribal people not being given their rightful share. So uh, how much do the tribal people are entitled in the revenue sharing of the state? Because I feel that sometimes the budget allocation, which has been in the news as well, we the hills, the, the hills are not given the title, uh, I mean, the share they're entitled to. So in this article of yours, you have opined the same. So kindly take us through this. Well, uh, let us take uh, this uh, budget estimate for financial year 22-23. Right. Because this is uh, current financial year. Mm -hmm. So for this year, budget estimate is uh, originally it is uh, 34,930 crores. Now, this has been revised to 35,882 crores. Now, the question is whether this money, 35,882 crores, whether it is equally divided right. among all the districts, among all the people in Manipur. If we take Manipur, then we, we, must, we must realize that there are two distinct parts, distinct parts. One is Manipur plain area. The other is the hills of Manipur. Therefore, this money we have, this 35,882 crores, whether this money is spent mostly in Imphal plain mm -hmm. or this also spent, spent in hill areas. This is the article I have written. Right. So the first question that we should answer is that where is this, this money coming from? Mm -hmm. And in what manner it is coming? So 90% of our revenues or resources come from the strip, from the center. It comes from central taxes and also grants in it. Mm. Now, on, uh, the Manipur state generates only 10%. Okay. Now, if we, if we, and, uh, if we, uh, study and analyze this finance commission because finance commission is very important for us this finance commission has two functions one is how much money should be kept by the center and how much money should be distributed and second important part is that this money to be distributed to the states what is the criteria or formula to be applied mm. so we have this uh, 15 finance commission and according to this 15 Finance Commission, they have come out with six formulas. The first, first formula is the income distance. The second is the area. Third is the uh, population. The fourth is our uh, forest and ecology. And the next is uh, our democratic performance. The last is the tax and fiscal efficiency. So they have given points points are assigned. So if we analyze this, this formula, and the same, based on this formula, money is distributed to, to the, all the states. Mm -hmm. So for example, income distance, it simply means what is the per capita, per capita income of a particular state as compared to other states. Some states are poor, some states are rich. If some states are poor, mm -hmm. they get more money and 45% of this money is assigned to them. Mm -hmm. Like for us, uh, this uh, population will get 15, area will get 15, then this uh, forest will get 10, this democratic, another 12.5%, the remaining 2.5% to tax efficiency. Applying this formula in Manipur, I have given in my article a mm -hmm. chart, right. working it properly based on documentation. So, Hill people of Manipur should get at least 51% of it. Mm. 
51% works out to around 18,000 crores. Okay. So my question to my people in Manipur is mm -hmm. where the, the government of Manipur is spending 18,000 crores in hill districts. Right. If we are not getting it, mm. then question is why? Mm -hmm. Are we not entitled to? I have made a submission here that as per the formula given by the central government through this 15 finance commission, the money is this 51% or 18,000 crores is given to the people of hill areas. It is meant for them. Therefore, according to me, they are entitled to it. Mm -hmm. So these 18,000 crores for this current year should be spent on, on, on these people. Correct. If they are not spending it, then I have my problem. Mm -hmm. For example, if we see the development in Imphal, uh, this Imphal Valley and the hills of Manipur, then I see most of the developments are taking place in Imphal Valley. For example, you have the uh, assembly, the secretariat, mm -hmm. the high court, all the institutions, mm -hmm. all the hospitals, all education, colleges, universities, schools, the roads, power projects, right. name everything. Right. It is taking place here. Mm -hmm. So again, I I am I am from Ukru district. Mm -hmm. So when I see Ukru and Ukru proper, mm -hmm. I want to name one building or project. I, I do not find it. So there is there is inequality mm -hmm. in this distribution of funds. Okay. That this is one of the reasons why there is a big, big gap between the plain of India, plain of Manipur and the hills hills of Manipur. Mm -hmm. So this is my this is this is my submission in my article. Right. I have written a long article. I have given some I think, examples. I think everyone should read the article. It's a very... Uh, so it is a web, uh, webcasted by EPO. It's still available. It's, you can still see. Still available, yes. yes. It, this is going to be a, an enlightening, enlightening article, I yes. should say. Yeah, so um, after listening to what you have to say, I feel to ask this question. Are you, do you feel the same? Do you feel that uh, the revenue sharing, which the tribals are entitled to, which the hills, I should say, the hills are entitled to, we're not getting it. So do you think our leaders, our hill leaders failed uh, to get the, our fair share or do you think this, it is the government's, uh, the government's failure to uh, give the rightful share to the hills or is it the public uh, which we are ignorant of and because of this the government of Manipur or the valley dwellers are taking advantage of? Both. Okay. Our people are very ignorant. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say this. I've been raising this issue in all my speeches I've given to so many places. Okay. Still, they do not, they do not react to me. Mm. Despite my, uh, my loud voices I have raised. Okay. And as far as plain people are concerned, if our people does not know that this money is meant for them. They'll keep the money and spend on them. Right. And in that sense, I have been saying, if we have to live together in Manipur, peacefully, prosper together, then let us share it equally. Mm -hmm. Let us develop equally and let us uh, uh, have a harmonious, equal partnership, mm -hmm. sharing the revenue proportionally according to this uh, uh, 15 Finance Commission formula. Right. And that is the right thing to do. Right. In my okay. view. And one more thing, do you think are the leaders of the hills, are they failing, the, are they failing the people, or do you think they are not doing enough? We all have failed, okay. including me, okay. because I should be raising this issue more loudly, mm -hmm. and then so everyone can hear it. Mm -hmm. That is the attempt I'm making with you. Okay, so we have failed collectively. Yes, and we must we find have. solutions. Yes, we all have failed. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, honest opinion. And uh, uh, my next question will be on your article titled "Ownership of Mineral Rights: A Case Study of Manipur." I want to ask this question because it comes to the uh, the picture of uh, 
ignorance one more time because we are not so much uh, enlightened yet on this kind of uh, issues and uh, on this it was published on the same newspapers on the 22nd and 23rd of September respectively and I the, the question will be if uh, you are of the opinion that our minerals are being mined illegally or are the mining rights and license lease being obtained through illegal means and if so how do we prevent such illegal acts because uh, I believe yes we tribals we own our land and then sometimes due to our ignorance we are taken advantage of like uh, the revenue sharing so what will be your opinion on this based on this article yes in this article I have uh, analyzed and I have, in fact I have done research mm -hmm. who should have the ownership of these minerals see let me come straight to the point mm -hmm. the law of the land is this that the land owner is also the owner of this subsoil, subsoil minerals in other words the land owner is also the owner uh, owner of the all the minerals which is beneath his land this is the law of the land. Mm -hmm. And I get this support by analyzing Article 294 okay. and also Article 297. Of the Indian Constitution? Of the Constitution okay. of India. Okay. So this issue has come up in the highest court of the country, that is the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So Supreme Court has... Uh, Supreme. In number of cases, Supreme, Ho Supreme Court has given the judgments. The latest is the judgment in, uh, in the case of Meghalaya. This, this relates to tribal land. So this judgment of the Supreme Court clearly says that the tribal, in the case of tribal land, the, we, own, we own the land individually or community land. Whoever is the owner of this land will have the legal right of over the over the minerals. This is a judgment. Okay. So we have number of judgments on the basis of on the basis of which I have come to this conclusion. But if in the case of Manipur, if all the media reports are to be correct, mm -hmm. then there are number of licenses issued, mm -hmm. permits have been issued. A uh, number of MO, MOU, MOU has been entered by government of Manipur mm -hmm. or government of India with many companies. This relates to uh, this, uh, our limestone, our chromite, and our petroleum deposits. Mm. So if we, we even have natural gas, right. lots of natural gas. So if any license has been issued or permits have been granted, without the informed consent of the landowner, then that is not right. Mm. But, or if MOE, MOE is signed or license is obtained using unfair means, I, I, I would say, or misrepresentation of facts or disinformation, then these licenses are all illegal, right. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So I, if someone wants to have detail of this, kindly go through my article. It is a very long article. Mm -hmm. And I have given all the possible examples. Who should own this? Minerals. Okay. So, we, we, for example, if any kind of minerals are found in our tribal area, a tribal land, or the hills, uh, we tribals are the absolute owner of those uh, minerals. Yes. But right. you cannot just take out the minerals. Right. You have to take permission mm -hmm. or licenses from central government, right. even if you are the owner. So there is a legal process mm -hmm. to be followed. Right. For example, your land is taken over by the government of Manipur. Mm -hmm. Then government of Manipur should follow due process of law. Correct. Without that, they have no right. right. And you have the right. Mm -hmm. But as I said, you have to follow the procedures. Correct. There are mineral laws, there are rules, regulations to be followed. You can't just take out and take here is my minute. So that becomes illegal as well if that is no. Done. Yeah, it will become <laughs> you yourself on the land, right. the minerals, mm -hmm. but still, you have to follow certain 
rules and regulations. Okay. Okay. So to understand this uh, thoroughly, I think everyone needs to go through the article which you have uh, Please go shared. To. Right. Okay, so I'll uh, ask you another question, a follow-up on the same, because uh, it is related to our tribals. Uh, again, um, ownership and protection of the tribal lands in Manipur uh, Review. It was published on the 10th and 11th of February, 2021. And uh, with, uh, I will add another one to this. The Maitis demand for the ST committee, it's, uh, you know, it has been a very contentious issue as well between the Valley Dwellers and the Hill people. So, globbing this together, I want to ask if our land is under the threat of invasion, if uh, we tribals, especially the tribals, are under the threat of uh, invasion, and also, uh, how do we protect ourselves in case of any such untoward incidents as happens? How do we protect ourselves from such threats? It's a serious question you have asked, right. but let me uh, attempt to answer it. I have written this article. This article is very, very lengthy. Okay. But let me start with the constitutional provisions. Mm -hmm. Fifth schedule of the constitution provides protection to tribal lands. And if you go to para 5, bracket 2, bracket A, this provision practically directs the states to ensure that tribal lands are safe. Hmm. Now, I will not uh, dwell on this uh, fifth schedule for long, but then we come to Manipur state. Okay. When we come to Manipur state, what is that law prevailing in the state? The law which is prevailing regarding land is this... Uh, Manipur Land Revenue and Land Reforms Act 1960. So I will, in, in short, I will use the Act. Okay. The Act. This Act extends to the whole of Manipur, except hill areas. And what is this hill areas is defined in the notification issued in 1962. So these two together you have to read when you, when you want to understand the land rights in Manipur. Now in Para 158 of the same act, this Para or this article 158, 158 of this act protects the tribal from encroachment. Okay. In, in short, non-tribal people cannot buy land in tribal areas. So this is a protection you get. So we have this protection. No, I mean, non-tribal cannot buy, right? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, are we fully protected? What is low prevailing? As I said, this act does not extend to hill areas. Mm -hmm. Then what is protecting you? Which law is prevailing? What I am saying is this. Our customary law is, is the only law that is prevailing right. and that is sup supreme for tribal areas. Mm -hmm. On the basis of this tribal land, the entire land in, in tribal areas, either individually owned or community owned, in the case of Gugis, the chief of the Kugi village practically owns the land, right. barring a few land here and there, which are owned individually. So in our Naga area, it is, it is the individual or the community who owns the land. There is no government land in my area, except mm -hmm. probably one or two here and there, which has been acquired following due process of law. Now, a question has come, mm. is this our law, customary law, mm. protecting us? Mm -hmm. Then the question comes, let us, let us come to the recent development. Our brothers and sisters in the plain area, they want to become sigil tribes. Right. Can, can we stop them asking this? 
democratically, since we are in a democratic country, they can ask. Mm -hmm. Whether they get it, whether they don't get it, that I cannot say. But all I want to say to my people is that, as in boxing match, mm. the referee will say mm. to the two boxers, defend yourself all the time. Right. So I want to tell my people, defend yourself all the time. So how do you defend yourself? Mm. So this question comes, is the present customary, customary law protects you? Fine. If not, then what is the way out? My submission here is that our customary law is not perfect. Mm. It, it is not an act or it is not a law mm -hmm. recognized by the authorities. Right. Therefore, we must codify our customary law. Okay. Convert into an act, a law. And even if you want to protect yourself, put the provisions you require. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. You put the provisions. You put an article the way you want to protect yourself. So if you protect yourself, even if someone wants to enter your area, mm -hmm. then you, you, you will have your law. According to, according to me, this should be done immediately so that you are safe, your lands are safe. Right. This is what I have been saying to everyone. Yes, it, it is. Have I answered your question? Yes. I really don't. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. <laughs> yes, codifying our customary law would be the best as of now, I mean, at the present situation. Let me say right. something more. Sure. Supposing your law is codified. Mm. Now, what is the benefit of it, apart from protecting yourself? You will have access to all the resources available, mm. banking, financial institutions. You can access, mortgage your land, take the loan. That is one benefit. Another important thing is that you, all your boundaries will be demarcated, mm. like a pata system. Mm. It will be actually a parallel to that law I was referring to. Okay. Manipur Land Revenue and Land Reforms Act. Mm. That hill area will have a parallel law, mm. recognized by Parliament of India. Or Parliament should enact it. Not only by the state. If that is done, then you know, you know where you stand exactly as far as the law is concerned. Okay. This is what I have been saying to my people. Let's do it. Mm. Can we do it? Okay. I, I it, wonder how. Yeah, how possible it is to codify our customary law? It's not that difficult. Okay. So we, we should form a committee immediately in traffic okay. and put up to. Since, since our uh, tribal people have different customary laws, would, do you think there, would there be any challenges to it? Or See, all this customary law we have, we can examine which can be picked up, mm -hmm. put together. Mm -hmm. And which are not relevant, we should, dis we should leave them. What is relevant, what is important, what is applicable, we should take them okay. and put it there. Mm. Hopefully, this can be implemented. Practically, uh, as well. I'm, I'm very, I'm very optimistic. Okay. Uh, all right. Are, are you willing to take any, any, any sort of uh, responsibility in case this is possible for us? I've been telling. Put me in the committee. All right. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So um, another contentious issue of the state, uh, which I would like to put forth, which is the delimitation. Uh, the delimitation of the state has not been exercised for so long and it is due to be, in fact, to be exercised in 2026, but um, we're not sure whether it's going to be exercised or not. Um, on your article published on the 20th and the 21st of uh, February this year, uh, you talk about the same issue and then how our tribal people have been undemocratically undem uh, represented in the state assembly or uh, we have been deprived of the equal representation in the in the state. So kindly uh, talk to us through it. Again, let me come straight to the point. Mm. The limitation commission was set up by government of India. Right. So this limit delimitation exercise was to be carried out. Mm. But unfortunately, government of India came up 
and said, this exercise will be restricted to JNK only. Mm. And this Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Nagaland, they were left out. And we don't know uh, whether they have a good reason or not. Right. But according to me, no proper reasons are available. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Why is this so? The limitation, the delimitation exercise in the whole country was carried out from 2002 onwards, based on 2000, 2001 census. It's a complete, except for these four states, right? Now, at that point of time, it was not carried out saying that there is a law and, law and order issue in these four states. Mm -hmm. Now, thereafter, number of parliamentary elections, assembly elections, local civic bodies elections have taken place. No issue, mm. no complaint. Everything has been done. But when it comes to delimitation matters, they said, no, it cannot be done. Mm. For example, in the, in the state of Manipur, the government of Manipur getting all the revenues based on that mm. census 2011, census 2001. So they have been enjoying all the benefits, but when it comes to the delimitation exercise, they said no. And the value-based political parties, value-based uh, civil organizations, they came out with a protest saying that in some subdivisions of hill districts, there are abnormal population growth. Mm. Taking this as a as a as a uh, as an issue, they said delimitation should not be should not be carried out here. Mm. According to me, this protest is not correct, mm. unjustified, because in my article I have given six reasons why population has increased in tribal areas. Please go through this right. because it is. Six, if I keep narrating, I will have no time to talk. Okay. Okay, All so right. I will not go into that. Yeah, no problem. But the thing is, mm -hmm. if, if, if delimitation exercise can be carried out in chain K, where there is much more law and, on, law and on order. Mm -hmm. And in recently, government of India give directions to election commission that delimitation, delimitation exercise be carried out in Assam and the Manipur. Mm -hmm. Arunachal, Arunachal protest and Nagaland will be done later on. Mm. But in Assam, it is going on. But in Manipur, again, it is not taking place. Question is why? Who is protesting? Who is stopping them? So this is the question I have raised. This is the question we have to answer. Now we are in Supreme Court. I believe Supreme Court will be uh, fair and judicious in this regard. Now, coming back to uh, actual, ex uh, actual working of this delimitation exercise, if it is based on 2001 and it is carried out, then hill areas should get three additional seats. Okay. One from Chanapati, another from Chandil, and the third one from Okru. Okay. It's clearly working out on the basis of government documents. Mm. And if some people say, no, we don't want 2001 census, then I am telling, then let us take 2011 census. Mm. And if we take census, census 2011, then Hill people should get seven extra seats. Okay. So it will become uh, this working is done on the basis of government documents. I have not done anything of my own. Mm -hmm. it is, these figures is emerging from the documentation. All right. So my point is, hill people are underrepresented. Mm -hmm. Plain people in Manipur are overrepresented. Okay. And this has been going on for the last many years. Mm -hmm. So anyone looking at these figures, they will they will definitely find that this is unfair. Right. 
Is it fair? I don't think so. Right. So our people are, are being deprived of our rights, constitutional rights. So this is one issue I have raised. Mm -hmm. And um, even in this article, I have also mentioned that clapping of these uh, eight constitution, constitutions, uh, constituencies of Thobal area mm -hmm. in this outer constituency for parliamentary uh, election purpose, this is not justified. The people of Thobal area, these eight assembly constituencies, mm. they have been deprived of the fundamental right. They cannot contest, mm. they cannot elect the right candidate. These eight assembly constituency should be clubbed with the inner, inner. parliamentary constituency, right. according to me. Mm. And that is the right thing to do. Correct. Correct. So um, th this is a huge issue. Very big yeah, issue. Uh, very big issue. So my question is, are we, the tribals, doing enough? Are we fighting hard enough to get what is rightfully ours? To be rightfully, to be democratically represented in the state assembly election? Are we doing enough? We, in the sense, uh, the Hill leaders in particular, the public in general, are we doing enough? Or what do we need to do? Let me answer in a different way. Sure. Arunatra protest mm -hmm. has come out big, big rallies to conduct mm -hmm. delimitation exercise as on today. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any rally here? Over here in, in, in Manipur? Hills. I have not seen yes. Very silent. Very, very silent. Right. But I believe, I hope that if anyone reads my article, mm -hmm. at least he will come to know what is the, what is the situation we are in. And if this can, so to say, provoke them to thinking, mm -hmm. then my article has served its purpose. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, we public needs to do much more if we really uh, want to get what is rightfully ours. So I'll come to the next question. Um, your opinion on the Naga issue and Meite resistance on the same were shared on your article titled the Indo-Naga Peace Settlement, the Meite Resistance. It was published in the, the Nagaland Post, the Achadeli, the Achadeli and the Ifal Free Press on uh, December 4, 2019. Share your views on this political imbroglio and uh, do you think, can we, can we still find a peaceful solution, honorable for all? Because this, this Indo-Naga Peace Process has been going on for so long. And even with the NSC and IM, it's been uh, going on since 1997, since the first uh, ceasefire agreement. I mean, yeah, uh, agreement was signed in 1997. But uh, as of now, uh, the public is frustrated. The public wants a solution, but nothing positive seems to be uh, coming out. In 2015, if the framework agreement was signed, but uh, it seems to be a totally uh, forgotten agreement already because uh, the public is not uh, given what they have they wanted uh, that what we have been asking for so what would be your opinion on this and then if there is any suggestions or if there is anything which could be done better in this process would like to hear it from you let me divide my answer into two parts okay. let me first address metis resistance right this article was written in 2019 correct right correct Metis, or the plain people mm -hmm. in Manipur, mm -hmm. have registered uh, our Naga, set, our, our Naga, our, our Indo Naga settlement mm -hmm. because they fear that Manipur will be divided. Okay. But if we see the uh, reports coming out in the media, or if we listen to the talks and narratives coming from the central leaders, and even our, also our leaders, then we will realize that Manipur state is not being divided. Mm -hmm. Territorial integrity of Manipur has not been uh, hurt. Therefore, the main resistance of the Metis is that they don't want this state to be divided into two parts or three parts. So the resistance is that. And then again, they came forward with uh, changing the call post, saying that administrative setup of Manipur also should not be stressed up. So, you see, they keep 
changing the goalposts, mm. which according to me is not justified. If Manipur is not divided, then they don't have any issue left. Mm. And I have written an article in 2019. No one has reacted okay. in the negative sense. Mm -hmm. Therefore, according to me, their resistance have been now practically not available. And if I may take you to the statement of our Honorable CM of Manipur on, may I look at sure, sure. my file? <clears throat> this is a newspaper cutting. Mm. When he went to Agardala on 31st January 2013, mm. he was with, uh, with uh, uh, CM of Assam. Mm. They went to Kedadwakadala, and their RCM makes a statement saying that Naga issue will be resolved very soon. Okay. So Manipur CM himself is saying that Naga issue will be resolved. Okay. So he is not protesting that Naga issue cannot be, should not be there. Let me quickly interrupt that. Does the CM, the present CM or the, pre, uh, the, the CM, present? Okay. CM, uh, the present CM. This, this, this is 31st January 2000. 2023. 23. Okay. You, you read it out 13, so I was a bit confused. Oh, I did. Uh, I said 23. Yeah. Sorry, 23. Okay. 23. Right. Sorry. I, 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 okay. What I'm saying, this is a recent statement, only right. last month only. Mm -hmm. and then, so what I'm saying is that when CM of Assam, who has been actively involved in negotiation. Right. And when he's meeting, when, when RCM is me meeting with uh, CM of Assam, they are the people who should be in the know. Mm. We ordinary people will not know so many things. So when they make a statement mm -hmm. saying that Naga issue be, will be resolved very soon, I believe that they have some, some credible information. And the resistance of the Metis have come down to a last level because Manipur is not being divided. And administrative setup should not be disturbed. I am saying to them, please, don't raise unnecessary protests. And it is not correct. It is not reasonable. Okay. Any solution that comes to Naga issue after struggling for 70 years, after sacrificing thousands and thousands of our people and so many other atrocities we have faced. And we are bringing this solution. Then the, we are not getting complete sovereignty. Mm. We are not getting complete independence still. Short of that, we are bringing this. Then if they say this, they, they are resisting everything, then it is not justified. Right. This is a point I have raised, mm -hmm. in, even in this article. Let me come to the second part of the uh, question you have. Okay. Our Naga movement for freedom mm. has been going for a long, long period. And if we talk on this from the beginning, we will have no time. So let me come to the point. On 3rd August 2015, government of India and NNC and IM, they signed an agreement in the presence of the Prime Minister of this country. This agreement is called Framework Agreement. On the basis of this agreement, a number of issues, or they call it competencies, they have, they have come to understanding and they have resolved. If I understand correctly, there are only two issues left. One is a Naga issue. The other is the Naga Constitution or separate constitution for the Nagas. Now, coming to the, this Naga flag, mm. what I want to say is that India got independence on 15 August 1947, whereas the Nagas declared themselves to be independent from the British on 14 August 1947. So they have foisted this flag, Naga flag, since then. And every year, mm. the Naga celebrate their independence day on 14 August. Right. So our flag 
have existed. We have this flood even today, and the Nagas shall have this flood even in future. Mm. So all that the Nagas have asked government of India is to recognize it. Why it is so? Because this flood re represents our identity. This flood symbolizes, symbolizes Naga nationhood. Mm. Therefore, the Nagas are asking, kindly recognize this. I have worked in government of India at the highest level for 36 years. From my angle, even if I sit on the other side as a government servant or as an Indian, I do not see any harm to recognize this Naga flag okay. from any angle. Mm. Therefore, my submission here is that India should recognize this Naga flag. Let them have it. Regarding the issue of separate constitution, all I have to say today is that since 1997, after entering into ceasefire agreement, negotiation had been taking place. Right. Numbers of meetings have taken place and number of issues have been discussed, analyzed and come to conclusions. Now, if there is going to be a final settlement at mm. the end of all these negotiations and time taken, there will be one written document. Mm -hmm. it, it has to come in the form of a written document. Why, why this written document cannot be constitution for the Nagas? This is my simple submission. Mm. It can be in the form of Naga constitution. Short of independence, short of sovereignty for the Nagas, India should give what the Nagas are asking today. Mm. Because for the sake of peace, the Nagas have come down from sovereignty, independence, to the level we are now. Right. We, we have no place to go further down. Mm. Now let me come to NNCN IM, Emergency National Conference mm. on 31st May 2022. In this conference, NNCN IM had declared that they shall protect unique history of the Nagas mm. and the Naga national principles at any cost. Mm. And this include Naga flag. This include separate constitution. Mm. Now, the Nagas have taken a stand. I would say the final stand. Okay. Now, it is for the government of India to consider it. If they don't consider it, then the question arises mm. whether the ceasefire whether the ceasefire or the ne negotiation will continue or, or break it down. If it breaks down, then we'll come back to the square one. Okay. Hmm. That means the Naga movement and Naga struggle for freedom and this war between India and Naga has been going on, except for the ceasefire agreement. Hmm. Otherwise, the war is going on. Right. So that means everything will be back to where we stand. Therefore, according to me, mm. this small thing the Nagas have asked, it should be granted without any problem, without waiting for, okay. without wasting any time for that. Okay. This is my submission. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to ask two supplementary questions on the two answers which you ask. The first part is the, the Maitei's resistance. Um, we want to know why the Maitais are so much resistant to the Naga issue because we are totally two different community. And then uh, are, are they of the intention of claiming the land of the Nagas or to invade it in future? Because um, as we can see, the Infal Valley, the Infal Valley is a tiny one. And then the population is uh, increasing each year. So 
why, why do you think they take so much interest in the Naga issue? Why are they so resistant towards the Naga's aspiration, the Naga's political aspiration to become uh, independent or to live as a sovereign state or to have a separate administration for ourselves? Hi, this is a very complex issue mm -hmm. in the sense the Maitis or the people in the valley, mm -hmm. they feel that they are being squished. Mm -hmm. because other people ca can come and stay, buy the land, etc. And at the same time, if we look at the history, in 1949, they Maharaja right. marched Manipur into India. Now he is a member of Raja Sabha. At, this, at that point of time in history in 1949, mm -hmm. we used to say that he was forced. Okay. To accept. So when, when the India. merger happened, mm. uh, did it include the hill areas or just the Imphal Valley? This is one research one has to tick off everything correctly. Mm -hmm. There are a number of reports saying that only some 700, right. 700 uh, square miles are mm -hmm. included. Mm -hmm. And there are also reports saying that mm, it is more than that. Okay. So this has to be actually uh, ticked out. Okay. I, I won't say this is correct or that correct, because this research I have not done at my personal level. Mm -hmm. Why the Maitis registered us? Because actually they are, you know, if you look at uh, the map of Manipur, the entire Imphal Valley is surrounded by all the hills. Right. So all the hill people surround them. So if these people go away, then Imphal will be left as a small place. Mm -hmm. But the point I have raised in one, of, in one of my articles is that they said Imphal is very small. Mm -hmm. I said Imphal is not very small. Okay. If you take Singapore, mm -hmm. which is only about uh, uh, 750 square kilometers, whereas Manipur Valley is about 2,000, some 200, mm, 200 square kilometers. Okay. So if if we work properly, then Imphal can be very, very developed. Mm. And the space should not be a problem. Okay. In today's world, mm. space should not be a problem. You can build a vertical right. sky rocket or sky, sky high buildings, mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. You can have a number of activities taking place. But because of so many reasons that is mm -hmm. not taking place. So they feel that they have been squished. But again, at the same time, if Imphal is not the capital, mm. or there is another uh, summer capital in the hill areas, so this congestion in Imphal will not take place. Right. So I have been saying, let us have summer capital or let us shift some of the institutions in hill areas. Right. They want everything here. Right. And when our people come down and work here, since everything is located in Imphal Valley, I have to come down, you have to come down and work here. And they resent mm -hmm. my being here. At the same time, they want everything here. Right. So my point is, let us shift some of these institutions. Correct. You come and stay in my place. Mm -hmm. You rent a house. We'll provide you accommodation. Mm -hmm. Here are he people come down taking rents in so many places, spending so much money. All the salary goes, at least 20-30% of salary goes to renting of the houses mm -hmm. because the institutions is located. The office is located. So our places are just 40, 50 kilometers away, most of our places. Mm. And they can, they, can, they can shift some of our capital. Right. I have been suggesting that some of capitals capital be built. Right. Or at least, uh, as I said, in the revenue sharing, mm. if, we, if we spend or invest that kind of money, our place also will be developed. Okay. And uh, we will not come to uh, this Imphal Valley at all. Right. Will stay in our place. So, okay. so, so this congestion is their own making. They they, they have made these congestions right. themselves, right. and they're they're resentful of it. Mm. 
I said, let us uh, spread it out. Yeah. Out of the, the, their intention of not uh, willing to develop the hills, they have made this. They want easier. to have this. They want to have this. <laughs> right. And they don't want to share. Mm. And you come. Okay. No, no, I don't want you. All right. Okay. Thank you for your uh, honest opinion. All right. The next question is uh, regarding the Indonaga peace process. Um, are, are you of the opinion that uh, India should be trusted? Have they been sincere enough? Or are they in the verge of uh, betraying the Nagas again? And vice versa, are the, uh, the Naga leaders, the Naga political leaders, sincere to the public? I will give you part answer to this. Okay. Not fully. Not fully. Yes. All right. No, why? I do not trust these inter interlocutors. Okay. They have been playing game with us. Mm -hmm. Take RN Ravi, take other interlocutors. You remember recently he has made a statement? Uh, which one? RN Ravi? RN Ravi, okay. as a governor of Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I have not brought a... So you can, you can quote it if you want to. I, I don't have it. All right. But it is in my room. Okay. Yeah. It is a newspaper cutting I have. Okay. In that statement, when he was talking to some IS probationers, mm. he said, Britishers had uh, treated Nagas as different people, mm -hmm. different nation. That is wrong. Mm. India has followed this narrative. Mm. That is wrong. He's saying Nagas are not different. We are saying we, we are very different, right? right? Mm -hmm. We are very different from India. So Britishers treat us very different. India also treated us very different. That's why all these negotiations are taking place. This war is going on. But he said, this is unacceptable. Mm. Second thing again, he said, I have brought this agreed position mm. with NNPG. He didn't say government of India has done it. Right. He said, I have done it. So as I said earlier, he was trying to divide the Nagas. Right. If he was sincere, very sincere, honest, he, those people could have been included in the negotiation which started from mm. 1997. 25, 26 years ago, he started. He could have easily included these people uh, before signing this framework agreement. Uh, even after signing framework agreement, they could be included there. But he made another agreement. Have you ever seen anywhere in the world that there are eight, two agreements, separate discussion taking place, right. separate dialogue is taking place? What type of game is this? Hmm. This is most unfortunate, most unacceptable. That is why I say these people are playing game. Mm. These people are not at all sincere. Mm. And if you look at the background, they, are, they play this game only. Mm. So I don't trust them, and our people should not trust them. Okay. They do not represent government of India in the manner they should. He represents government of India as interlo interlocutor. An inter interlocutor should not be biased, prejudiced, and has his own opinions. So it should be the opinion of the government of India. Okay. So my suggestion to my people is that if any dialogue is to be continued, mm. then it should be with the competent authority. Right. That is at prime minister level. Right. Let Prime Minister take decision on it. The, the earlier agreement was that the talk has to be at the Prime Minister level, unconditional and at the third part. Uh, third so country. that is yeah. that is what I'm saying. They right. have, you know. They have now narrowed it down to the bureaucratic have, level. Bro, they have right. brought down to this level. And that also now, it looks like to me, it is at the level of RN, RN Ravi as a person, mm. not as a representative of the government of India. Right. 
if he's biased, then you know the whole thing collapses. So do you think the the, the new interlocutor, A.K. Mishra, would be? Do you think he'll do better, any better, or would he, would he be? Very uh, sorry to say, I do not expect anything from this speaker. All right. Okay. What about about our Naga leaders? Are they being sincere to the public, or are they working hard enough to hammer out a solution? They are trying their best. Now, if you read uh, the happenings, mm -hmm. this NNPG yeah. and NSNIM, they realize that separately working is not working out. Separately going here and there, negotiating this side, negotiating mm -hmm. this side, it's not working out. So ultimately, they have come to some understanding and they are saying we'll work together. According to me, this is a very positive side, okay. and we should encourage it. But to actually um, to come to, I mean, to get a solution, we, sh we must, uh, we civilians should should also help them in the form of mass movement, in the form of raising our voices to the lowest possible. Deal, our voices are heard. Okay. Without civilian support, without civilian involvement, mm -hmm. I don't think government of India will listen to us. Okay. So it needs to be a mass movement, the people's movement. People's movement. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, th those are the main main questions I have prepared for you. But uh, lastly, but not least, um, the one of the current issues which our Hill people have been facing, which is the ADC election, which has not been conducted for more than two years. Uh, recently, the uh, it was informed that the um, government of Manipur is trying to conduct the election in April. But the delay has been going on since last year. It was promised October, February, now April. And uh, the, the people of the hills, now we are kind of frustrated. And then we are, uh, you know, increasingly not trusting the, not uh, believing the words of the government. So do you think this delay in the election is hampering the delay in development in the hills, or is there any constitutional breach by the government of Manipur? What should be done uh, to solve this issue? Because uh, this ADC has been, it, it, it is a, you know, the devolution of power is much needed for the tribals, uh, the people of the hills. What, what is your opinion on this issue? Let me put it this way. Hmm. If you look at Article 371C, mm -hmm. The powers are given to the governor. Mm. In fact, the president, president of India has all the power. And this power is exercised by the governor. Mm. And this very article, 371C, again gives power to this HHC, mm -hmm. Hill Area Committee. Hill Area Committee is a very, very powerful body. But they are not being exercised. Our representative have not been able to use it because of our own weakness. It's not the weakness of someone. It is our own weakness. So this powerful instrument given to us in the form of HSC has not been utilized in the manner it should be. If you look at the, <coughs> this uh, Manipur legislative Assembly, that HHC Act 1972, mm. powers given to the HHC, and these sexual matters means all these items to be exercised by HHC. That includes, for example, the main function of this HHC is that any development and economic, economic plan concerning hill areas, they have all the power. Mm. And all the financial statements, financial issues, except money, money bill, again relating to hill areas, they are, they, they are competent to act on it. So these are the two main parts given to the HSC. Mm -hmm. And then you have that scheduled, scheduled uh, these uh, matters, means uh, items to be exercised by them, issues to be exercised by them. So this again includes all this, like they control this uh, uh, ADC, I mean district council. Okay. So it is the HSC 
we should decide how this district council should be functioning. Now, they are not doing anything about it. Now, recently, if you remember correctly, ADC bill was prepared by this HSC. Right. And it was not even tabled in the assembly. Mm -hmm. They simply rejected. But if you ask me whether you like it or you don't like it, this HSC is submitted by our agency. And there are many fine points there. But one point, I somehow feel that uh, that point should have been discussed widely and opinion should be obtained, that is a budget exercise. Because I'm, uh, if there is no budget autonomy, then according, me, according to me, the whole exercise is, uh, is uh, not that uh, powerful. Okay. So even in that bill, if I look at the bill they have submitted, the HSC will prepare the budget and that will be submitted to the governor and governor will take a view. Now, governor will again, what happened after that, it is not written. But if you, if you remember my discussions, the devolution of this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, money to be divided. Mm -hmm. See, there should be a clear-cut allotment of fund to this, uh, uh, this district council. Very clearly in the form of, you know, some formula, like central state division, central state, that division of taxes, mm. that grants in it, like this, if that autonomy is given to the district councils, yeah, I'm talking about budget-wise, then it will make a lot of more sense. Okay. This exercise has not been done. Now you forget about this ADC bill submitted by AHC. It was totally rejected. Mm. Now government of India has prepared a bill. Okay. It is not a bill, it is an amendment bill. Mm. So they have uh, taken out some provision here, some added, some points here, but when you come to the budget, it is just zero exercise. Government of Manipur can decide how much money to give or mm -hmm. not to give. Mm -hmm. Routine money will be given and nothing else. Therefore, this, uh, this bill which we are talking about, uh, that uh, Government of India has passed, I'm told, recently, then uh, it is a, it is a uh, powerless, it is, a, it is a, uh, practically a useless ADC, mm. which we have seen in the past. Mm. Now, again, they created seven districts, right? These seven districts have it legally, completely everything done. Then if election is to be held, then where? Is it all nine di uh, these five districts? Or including these mm. other newly created districts? See, the government itself has created all these problems okay. because they do not consult the stakeholders. Creation of districts per se is not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But if you are not consulted, but if objections of people are not taken into account, then these problems, mm. you will face these problems. This should have been avoided. Okay. If I remember correctly, district council was, I mean the district, new districts were created without consulting right, right. the stakeholders. It happened overnight. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Right. So that is, a, that is a problem we are facing. Mm. So you create a problem and you don't know how to sort of solve the problem. All right. That's why you're, you're talking about ADC election. Now, how, how, where, where you are going to have this right. election? So it's in a very chaotic situation. They make it, they make it themselves okay. a very problem, problem. Okay, so, so the solution to this is uh, is gonna take some more time. To I, I don't know things. how they are going to solve. Okay. They are saying delimitation is right. going on for mm -hmm. this, for this purpose. Okay. But when they will finish it, we don't. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that that is the end of the questions. I have prepared for you, and uh, it's been a very interesting interaction. But um, just before we conclude the interview, I would like you to uh, take a moment uh, for a couple of minutes to share your thoughts, especially uh, send a message, particularly to the uh, to the youths, particularly specifically to the uh, the tribals or the people of the hills 
any kind of message uh, you'd like to give to, to our youth? Because we youth are, we believe we are the future of the society, future of the, um, the nation. So uh, at this moment, we are kind of frustrated because there's so much of lack of opportunity. Uh, the unemployment rate is going up very high. The opportunities avenues are very bleak for us. Uh, it's, it looks like uh, the future is not that bright for us. So uh, we're in a situation where we are looking for, you know, uh, a positive outcome with optimism. So at this testing times, we want you to share some message. I mean, send a message to us. Please take. Let me first start with the negative. Okay. I said, stop being ignorant. Don't be. Don't remain ignorant anymore. Mm -hmm. Second, I want any discussions on these important issues. Let us have informed discussions. Right. Well, all please have all the facts and understand the issue correctly, properly. That is one. Mm. Our people have become subsidy we have developed subsidy mentality. We want everything free. Hmm. If you want everything free, that, that will ruin you. Right. Now, we have become lazy also. Hmm. So I, I want our people to be hardworking and do your job properly. Like, even in education, why why are people uh, are not getting through in many of these competitive examinations? So this is one thing. Mm -hmm. So on the negative side, I say don't do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But on the positive side, I say to my people, to my younger, younger brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. stand up for your rights. Stand up for your rights. Fight for your rights. It is your future. Don't fight for many issues that are, that are not relevant. But choose those rights you should have. I have some issues I have raised, some rights I have discussed. Fight for this. Your future. Your future lies with whatever action you take today. Mm. So, I want my people to stand up, actually, and be counted. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute honor hosting you, interviewing you. And uh, I believe God will continue to use you and continue to be an inspiration, especially for us youths and then standing for our rights, fighting for our rights. And uh, I'm sure Lots of us youngsters will continue to follow in such footsteps because this is the need of the time. And I wish you success in uh, your future endeavors. May God continue to bless you with wisdom and good health. Thank you once again uh, for being a part of this show. I would like to thank our viewers today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have, we got the opportunity to know who K. Timothy Zimik is. And also we have discussed so many issues pertaining our issues, pertaining our rights what we need to do, what needs to be done. And uh, he has raised so many important issues which we are ignorant of. And like the last point he added, let us stop being ignorant. There are so many things which we need to know in order to live a very prosperous and a harmonious life. And this responsibility of ours, we need to take it seriously. Let us stop depending on others to come out and fight for us. Everything which we deserve has to be fought if not, some people who take advantage of our ignorance might be the uh, beneficiary of the rights which we have. Thank you for joining us one more time. Please continue to join us again. See you all in the next episode. Thank you.